Uh, and item number seven, which is related to item number six, as we've been saying, uh, is the acceptance of a, a draft environmental impact statement, uh, issuance of a notice of completion, and direction of a public hearing on the same. And uh, let me just restate something I, I said a little bit earlier, so we're very clear on what this means procedurally. Uh, when we uh, say that this is complete, does not necessarily imply that the council is satisfied with and pleased with the project, but rather that this draft environmental impact statement is responsive to the scoping document that was issued earlier, that it addresses all the questions that the scoping document posed, and therefore this is now suitable for issuance to the public and for public comment. So it's essentially an invitation for the public to weigh in on this project. And then based on that public comment and based on additional discussion, this will eventually be transformed into a final environmental impact statement. So you need not find every component of the draft um, satisfactory in terms of what you want out of the project. Maybe you do find it satisfactory, but it's not necessary for you to reach that conclusion in order to deem it complete. Um, so, uh, it's, it's any just I want to add one thing. We've also had the city staff has reviewed this. We've had uh, our consultants review it, and we think that, um, again, you don't have to accept everything that's being presented here, but we do think that what is what has what they've provided is in compliance with the scope. And that's the only hurdle you have to get through in order to open this up for public comment. Right. It's not just what they've presented. There's been give and take with our in our consultants and city staff on on this prior to the presentation to you. For and again basically months. you're scheduling a public hearing and saying it's suitable for the public to comment on it. Mm -hmm. Any questions about um, either the process or about the content of the DEIS? Councilmember Tranguchi. Okay, where do we start? Um, in, the, in the draft, you claim that you're going to use on your sales tax revenue. You had two charts. You had one for $350 a square foot and one for $500 a square foot. I thought you took the $350 a square foot, but you actually took the average, which was $425. And you're presenting in this draft that you're going to create $224,000 in sales tax revenue. Direct sales tax. Yeah. When I feel that that number is actually too high. I mean, I think that number should be more like 250 a square foot. So I just want to present that as something for the record. Uh, the other thing is um, we talked about the fact that in this draft, your school tax will be based on the number of students coming out of the project. 22 kids, is that correct? And I think the number you're multiplying by is 17,500. The thing I wanted to make sure too is that, and people, the public knows, is that that number is going to be fixed for the for the term of the pilot, which is 20 years. That's what we talked about the other day in the meeting. Well, taxes, you know. All right, let's put it this way. There's the inflation on the, every year on the pilot. All right, well, all right, that's fine. But if the number of students go from 22 to 32, you're not making a difference up over the 20-year pilot. Is that correct? Correct. And if they go to 10, we don't get any of the benefits right. of that. And that's that's okay. You go the other way. More than likely, it'll go the other way. It'll, it'll go up. That we wouldn't agree with. I'm not sure that. Uh, can't I, the future, I would say the staff, for what it's worth, has worked pretty hard with the school district to uh, come to an acceptable agreement on what the cost per student is and how the estimate is made uh, in how many students would be generated from a project, which is uh, quite frankly not something that was done in some of the prior projects. Uh, so uh, I myself, for what it's worth, am much more comfortable with the formula as it is established now. And I think if you applied the formula as it's established now to some of our older projects, you might have a more, a, a closer reality to what actually happened there. But it should be stated publicly that there is, this, this isn't just a number grabbed from the air. It's based on a, 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 a series of meetings with the school district and an accepted study and model for how students are generated in public school systems. So uh, that nothing is perfect science, uh, but um, I do think it should be pointed out that it's a little different than we've done in the past, and it gives me, at least me, uh, additional comfort that the uh, projection is more accurate. Well, just adding to what you just said, uh, Chuck, the numbers that they're going to formulate and what you're going to pay on school tax is basically about 40% of what the school tax bill will be. 
I think you, you mentioned in the draft that your, your school tax should be about $929,000. You're going to wind up paying about 364000 and that's over over the course of 20 years. So I wanted to just bring that to the public but, awareness. But, but, but you gotta be got to be careful here. The project is currently generating zero dollars in school taxes. What the agreed upon minimum uh, pilot that uh, at least uh, I think the majority of council at least we discussed is covering the increased cost to the school district as a result of the project, not the not what the, the property would generate in taxes if it were fully taxed. Remember, that project is current. That property is currently costing the school district zero, no dollars. The project will add 22 students. The cost of those 22 students, based on a number agreed upon between the city and the school district, is the minimum that the pilot has to be for us to bring it forward. That was always my understanding. So it's it's not that they're paying half the school taxes that they would get. That's a perfect world where you believe that every project should be fully taxed and pay all of it. Well, in my humble opinion, that means you'd have vacant property all over the place. I'm just telling you that there's a formula here that's been created to try to cover the cost that the project would, increase cost that the project would generate for the city school district. Okay, that's fine, Chuck. I just want to put that out for the public. Uh, one thing, I just want to go over parking uh, spaces, because you talk about 425 parking spaces here, but 325 are going to be for residential. And if you got 285 units, you got less than, I think, the 1.5 spaces we wanted or you talked about in the draft. Is that correct? We're at one space per bedroom. One space per bedroom. And, right. and then the other 100 spaces will be for visitors four. and for visitors coming into the... Uh, it was four per thousand. Uh, oh, you know, you need, that's right, you need four per, that's right, for the retail. You need 100 spaces for the retail. Yeah. And we're assuming that there's some, you know, the, the way that this parking is going to operate, it's not like the retail is going to be standalone parking and the residential is going to be standalone. We talk about shared. You know, there's going to be some right. shared parking. In the middle of the day, you'll have some shared parking. Or even um, that's it right now. Okay. Anything else from council? Councilmember Hyde. Uh, I share some of uh, Councilman Tranguchi's uh, problems with the with the DEIS. Um, Specifically relating to the number of children, uh, which I, as Abe knows, I think is low, and I've always thought it's low. Uh, the other issue we discussed, one of the parking problems that I think we discussed at the meeting was the, um, according to your pro forma, there was not a guaranteed parking, the, the parking spot was not included in the rent of these residential units. We have had an experience throughout the city of New Rochelle whenever that happens with people not buying parking spaces in the project but rather putting their cars out on the street. Um, this is a residential neighborhood and uh, I think this is a very real concern of the residents in that area and I would therefore recommend that you certainly consider uh, making that part of, uh, of your lease agreement. Right. That uh, one space comes with each apartment. Obviously, you have to charge more for the apartment, but I would I would uh, think it's a very good idea, especially given our history here. Um, the the number of school children we've talked about a lot, obviously, and, and we're going to disagree on that. I'm afraid, forever and ever. Uh, but the other the other thing that concerns me is is there is there any formula we could come up with in case there are more kids in the project? Are you willing to say we'll give you 17.5 per child? The challenge, right, this is a, a topic that's been discussed with a number of the council members over the, the last week or two. And the challenge that we have uh, is really one that's going to be driven by our financing. Uh, so it's very difficult for me to get construction and permanent financing on a project where there's a, a moving, you know, moving target like that. Um, so I'm not ruling it out completely, but I think it's something that's going to be difficult to, to meet you, you know, to get you what you want. Um, which is to say, you know, if you have 25 kids, your taxes are going to go up, you know, three times 17,000. And what I'm going to say to you is to say, listen, if I have less kids, I want my taxes to go down as well. Oh, um, I don't you know. have a problem with that. If you so, you know, it's something I want to continue to explore with, you know, I know it's something that Councilman Rackman brought up and, you know, it's something that, you know, Councilman Tarantino talked about and Councilman Tranguchi talked about. So I know it's a real issue uh, with members of council and we need to think creatively about ways to, to deal with it. Uh, okay. Councilman Fertel? Yeah, one of the questions I had during our meeting was, um, I think 
with all due respect to the council members, they really have no experience or knowledge as to how to quantify the number of kids in a building that's being built. They rely upon experts. And they're looking at another project, which is the Avalon, you might as well say, where there are a substantial number of children. And I've asked whether or not we could take the formula that's applied by Rutgers, which involves, and to see whether or not that formula, if you used it to the Avalon, will come up with the numbers that are there so we could at least test that analysis to see whether or not it's an accurate projector. I do know that one of the arguments being made about Avalon is that you have three bedroom apartments there, and that, in effect, <coughs> creates a larger number of school children. But I'd like to see someone do an analysis using the Rutgers formula vis-a-vis -vis the Avalon so we could have some comfort that that analysis, if it had been applied to that project, would have come up with those numbers as well, because that way it would show me as a council member that this is not something that's being done necessarily in a vacuum. So I would hope to give me some comfort in, in council member Hyden, who's concerned about the numbers, I assume if he saw that that formula would show the number of kids in Avalon being applied to this project, that would give him more comfort about the number sure. of children in this project. I think so that's our problem. We could do that. Well, I'd like to see somebody do that. No, that again, a lot of these questions that come up, and they're all appropriate, and you're discussing it for the public to hear, maybe for the first time. These are the kinds of questions that you're going to ask that when the public hearing comes and your questions come that we're going to answer in an FEIS. So that kind of study that you're asking for is perfectly appropriate to go into an FEIS and you'll have that information before the final decisions are made. And, and as far as the incremental, I was, I'm the only one here that's been on the school board. I was on it for 14 years and I know, um, do we have to keep in mind that we're talking about 22, 23 kids that are going into the same class in the first grade. They'd be spread over six grades, eight grades, high school, so I want people to understand that we're not talking about packing an individual school with a lot of children. We're talking about adding school children over a, over a stretch of years. And that's why the increased cost is not the full amount allocated if you divide the number of school children by the total number of the budget. You don't have to buy, add a new principal. You don't have to build a new building. You don't have to add, so, so, you don't have to add a superintendent. You don't have to add administrators. You may not even have to add any teachers. But there is obviously an additional cost associated with each child, and that's what the figure that was come up with as the number. So I want the public to also understand that when you hear the number of $20,000 or $22,000 per student, that's just taking the budget and dividing by the number of kids, which is not the actual increased cost that would occur if you had 22 students across the range. But there is an additional cost because you do have to provide services to these kids, and I'm aware of that and, and interested in that. And also, personally, uh, I think it's a good thing that we add kids from these kinds of projects to our school system. I think it enhances our school system, provides kids from uh, upper middle class backgrounds that will help you know, diversify the, the, the classes. I think it's a good thing, and I think it's important, and I think we should keep that in mind as well. So I think we should not always look at the negatives of adding children to our schools, but the positives as well. Other questions or comments? Council Member Trangucci. Um, I agree with Barry, but one thing is it's good to add kids, provided we have the room for them. And that's the concern, well, um, because most of these children will be going to Trinity School, which is... Well, you don't know that. Some of them could be going to middle school or high school. That's true. And private uh, school. Private school. And Catholic schools and parochial schools. One thing I noticed, I went through this draft several times. And nowhere in there is it that you're going to be dredging the inlet. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Because, you know, you show this picture here, which is shows a nice waterfront view, but in reality, when it's low tide, it, it becomes a mud flat. And so, you know, you're going to create a walk around a mud flat. Well, as <laughs> I've stated, you're going to smell it. And uh, I've stated at this table before that uh, half the time it's high tide and half the time it's low tide. So let's hope it's uh, during the day that uh, it's high tide. It changes throughout Paris. the year. You can control the moon, and <laughs> that's going to be the pretty good. <laughs> That's it. Councilmember well, Rackman. Yeah. Is there a way for us to just find out how how full to capacity Trinity is, and what their breaking point is as far as adding students go? I'm going to ask the superintendent. Did we find that out? Sure. Maybe somebody already did, but I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, to finish, you know, because if we're looking, you know, if 20 kids throughout the grades puts us over where we're, we, we don't fit in the building anymore. Yep. I, I it's also hard to imagine. Well, I mean, it's been said. I'm not well, sure all 20 point, kids are going to be going to Trinity at the same time. Right, but at some point you do hit maximum capacity for a school. And I don't know if it's 50, if it's 100, if it's 20, if it's 10. I, I just, I, I'd be interested so to know. I it also depends who you ask, but we, we'll find out. Well, sure. Did you want to say something, Councilman Ryan? Is it, is it uh, proper or possible to have people from the school district come and, and answer these questions here in front of us, in front of Council? We can have anything we want. 
That doesn't mean they're going to agree to come, but you can ask them. Well, I can invite the superintendent or his designee to come to a meeting at some point to discuss that. I would, I would uh, think it'd be more beneficial to, to discuss it in an overall uh, uh, discussion rather than a project-specific discussion. So as a discussion item, when we have some time, we can bring him down and talk about how we came to the number and how we mm -hmm. got all these things that we're telling you. Just so the believe projects us. that we're talking about tonight, the Albany's thing and this, are both <laughs> relate to uh, well, the same distance. Those same numbers conditions. that we've developed relate to all development projects. They're not going to be different. Absolutely. They're all residential development. They're not going to be different. And yeah. they were developed in consultation with the school district. After hours of discussion, yes. Uh, anything else from council? Well, I would like to say, if I may, that although uh, I, along with everyone else, we have to reserve final judgment on this project until the process has fully run its course, until all these issues are fully explored, until the terms of the LDA have been fleshed out to everyone's satisfaction, I think this is a great project. Not a good project, a great project. I'm very excited about it. This has been in the making for 25 years. We've been talking about renewal of the waterfront as long as I've been a member of the City Council, and it is eagerly awaited by the vast majority of residents of New Rochelle. And all of these are important and legitimate questions, and we're doing our job by asking them. And it's going to be the obligation of the staff and the developer to provide answers that are satisfactory to the Council. But I don't want the, the tone of the conversation to uh, be confusing to those who may be observing because there is no question in my mind that New Rochelle understands the value of a revitalized waterfront and eagerly wants to achieve it. And for those who have um, doubts about some of the project specifics, I would, I would ask you to think about uh, a, a reverse scenario. Imagine if this project existed right now and we had full public access to the Echo Bay shore, even if at portions of the day it's a mud flat, and if we had a five or six acre public park that is vital and filled with people, and if we had a, a vibrant storefront on Main Street that is active and energized, and if we had an attractive setting that abuts and improves neighborhoods and that recharges the entire economy of the East End and improves the economy of the downtown. Imagine if that existed today and a city government came to the community and said, you know what, we have a great idea. We're going to tear all of this up. We're going to say, public, you're no longer allowed on this site. We're going to pump tons and tons of environmental contaminants and toxins onto the location. We're going to put our garbage trucks in our public works facility here. We're going to take some abandoned automotive and industrial and concrete uses and locate them there. How do you think that would be received by the community? What we are talking about is taking an area that is nothing but a dead weight on the physical and environmental and economic ambitions of the city and transforming it into a site of which we can be proud. And even as we ask these questions about the details, as I said, it's our job to do so. I don't want any of us to lose sight of the big picture because this is going to be a major win for New Rochelle when this is accomplished. And I'm excited about the fact that we're so close, so close now to getting it done. So. Uh, we have to decide today whether we're going to determine this uh, EIS to be complete and send it out for a public hearing. That is the only choice before us right now. Uh, and with that, I'm happy to move item 7.1. Do I have a second? I second. Second by Councilmember Fertel. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Certainly. Councilman Taranguchi? No. Councilman Tarantino? No. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Hyden? Yes. Councilman Fertel? Not only is it complete, but it's big, yes. <laughs> Councilwoman Rackman? Absolutely. Mayor Bramson? Yes. Motion passed 5-2. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you uh, those who are present. Appreciate it.